Hi, welcome back to AI News. Uh, my name is Ethan. This is Felicia. And we have Wolfgang. Yay! All right. <laughs> if you still remember him. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> from the last episode. Yeah, last episode was amazing. I loved it. And almost want to ask you, like, how do we pray to have, like, a more effective ways to improve our state? We have not yet covered mm -hmm. every county in California with a county prayer leader. We have many counties have a prayer leader, but not every county. So we're still looking for county prayer leaders. Mm. So if you live in a county and you go to the Pray California website, you can check counties and you can see, does this county have a prayer leader? And if you are into prayer and you love prayer and you're a mature, seasoned Christian, connect with us and say, I want to be a prayer leader for my county. You know, then you can start organizing people in your county and pray for your county and to transform it, to change it. Christians need to start to step up to the plate and take responsibility and take action. You know, faith without action is dead. So we need to put action behind our faith. If we say we have faith, we also need to follow it up with action. I love that. Because I heard so many Christians, they just pray and then like, oh, I see this problem. Ah, just, just pray about it. Ah, just do that. Ah, and a, do a, nothing. Yeah, a, abortion. Ah, just pray about it. Ah, my kids is getting transgender. Ah, let's, let's pray about it. And they don't do anything. They don't start homeschool. They don't teach their kids. They don't spend time with their kids. They, I think last episode you talk about repentance. I think that is so important because a lot of parent kids got poisoned by the public school. So what I do is I just, I just pray about it. And then uh, whatever he does is whatever he does. He want to be a girl, then uh, be a girl. And then I uh, hope he finds Jesus some way. But from what I see is as a parent, you need to repent with your kids. You need to teach the power of repentance. Hey, son. Uh, I was wrong. I didn't know how to raise you. Matter of fact, I don't know how to raise you right now. L let's repent together and let's follow God. Let's pick a time and then we can study the Bible together. In the Ten Commandments, it talks about honor your parents. Mm -hmm. And from my opinion, that means parents need to be honorable. One of the honorable things we can do is that we show we can accept our mistake and repent. What do you think about the, the parenting? What can we do in the, uh, as a Christian parent to help our kids against these dark forces? The father and the mother, mm -hmm. the parents, still have the absolute number one priority of teaching and educating their children. They should have the influence uh, and the direction and the guidance for the children. This society that we are in right now wants to take away these rights from the parents and wants to transfer everything to the government and wants to indoctrinate the children through woke uh, kind of theories and teaching where they can brainwash more or less the children with their own agenda. As a responsible mature Christian, I think it is very important that I look out and watch out what my children are consuming, what is their intake, what are they being taught, and watch over it. And so that is why just recently in the last two years, what has happened is more and more people have stepped up to go to school board meetings and yeah. raise their voice and say, hey, what I see, what my child comes home and tells me things, that's absolutely wrong. And we need to do something against it. So that are positive steps where parents are actually waking up and taking responsibility and they are standing actively against dark forces. How can parents fight these dark forces? Because the, the truth is the dark forces has consumed all the education, all the entertainment. You turn on TV, it's dark forces. You put out your phone, Twitter, uh, TikTok, Facebook, all these kind of things. They just keep feeding it. And uh, parents do fight against this kind of thing. Well, again, we need to set boundaries. And there need to be boundaries to what is being consumed, 
and yeah. or watched or listened to and also show your children positive examples. I have a friend in San Diego. He's a pastor. He and his wife have eight children. And, uh, busy pastor. Yes, busy <laughs> pastor. <laughs> and what they do is they do what they call a family altar, meaning they bring everybody together in one room and then they start worshiping together for an hour. So the children are getting used to that and they know, okay, every day we have for an hour, we have worship. And then the mom is homeschooling the children, you know? So the influence, the evil influence is greatly, greatly reduced by giving positive examples and showing them what they can do instead, what to focus on. So focus on God and uh, worshiping God and read the word of God. And the children are starting to be prophetically gifted. The Lord, the Holy Spirit gives them words. They start to prophesy. It's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. And this is an example of how life should be lived. Yes, yes. Recently, a study that just came out, I, I just read it. And then uh, it says that religious people, not just Christian, religious people with uh, religious practice actually don't die from despair. Even if you are a Christian, you say that you're a Christian, but you don't have any religious practice, you are more likely to die with despair because you don't know what you're doing. So I think that action, like the one you just talked about, worshiping, take the whole family worshiping together, I think that is the, one of the most important thing, and that is what every parent can do. Right now, there are a lot of parents that are already in, in this kind of thing, and their kids are already grown up, and then they're already teenager, they're already rebellious, they're already thinking about transing their, their body, or they're, they're already doing drugs. What are your message to these kind of parents if they are uh, right now a little late to start this kind of thing? I do think we are moving away from religion, but some people move away from religion into the world. Yeah. But we need to move away from religion into a relationship with the Lord, yes. into a relationship with Jesus Christ, into a relationship with the Holy Spirit, because then we become kingdom-minded. This remnant of people that does that, these are the ones that the Lord will call upon the faithful ones, the remnant, the rest, their future is not fun. <laughs> it's, it's, really it's, not it's, fun. <laughs> it's horrific. Yeah. It's a horrible future that they walk into. Yeah. You know, it's the way to the pit. I'm also in a ministry that is, I'm one of the teachers in the ministry that's called Resurrected Life Ministries. Mm -hmm. So where we are teaching what is our identity in Christ and how are we to live a Christian life? Mm -hmm. Because very often it is not taught in the church. So we have classes that are 12 weeks long and people come and they learn how am I supposed to live a life as a Christian? Yeah. You know? And often it comes along with inner healing. Why? Because people have experienced trauma in their lives, very often when they were young. But then they carry the wound of that trauma, sometimes for decades, even uh, when they are old. People that are 60, 70, 80 years old still have things that they're carrying as a burden with them that happened when they were seven years old. And they never were able to get rid of that burden. Or that what happened when they were five-year-old is now causing the 16-year-old to become wanting to be a transgender. Yeah. Because there is a wound in the person that has not been healed. Inner healing has not happened. They have not surrendered their life truly to the Lord. And so that is why they are following a pathway that is maybe suggested to them by somebody that thinks, okay, let's make some money here and let's change the gender and so on. Not thinking about the, the eternal consequences for that person, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. which are very often horrific. There are many examples of uh, people that change gender repented afterwards and said, oh, this was the most horrible decision I ever made in my life because I can't reverse it now, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And they're very, very sorry about what they did. To and themselves too. 
to themselves. They did a news, and then uh, it was a girl, mm -hmm. a little girl, 23, when she recorded the message. She is all bald, mm. and then uh, with beard and mustache, and then glasses with pimples on her face. And she is just looking at the camera, it's like, there is no reversal now. I can't do this. I don't look like anything. I don't look like my, my mom. I don't look like my dad. I don't know who I am. And then it's just sad to see that these dark forces can consume a person to the point that there is no turning back. I want to say here at this point, if you are such a person, or if you are a homosexual, or a lesbian, or a transgender, or if you know in your spirit that that what you're doing is wrong, then we as Christians, we love the sinner, mm -hmm. but we hate the sin. Why do we hate the sin? We hate the sin because God hates the sin. And he says in the word, we need to do the same. Mm -hmm. So we cannot condone the sin but we do love the person. And that is very often hard to understand for somebody who is caught in this trap mm -hmm. and they don't know a way out. But we love the sinner, the person. We love them. But we do need to hate the sin because God hates the sin. And every person that is caught in such a trap has a way out of it mm -hmm. and there can be healing for it it is not that i am born like that and that is who i am now that is false that's a lie from the pit of hell and there's many people that have been caught in the trap of homosexuality or lesbianism and they have come out of it and now live a beautiful life. They're married to the other sex. Like God said in the beginning, there is man and woman. And they're supposed to be a married couple and have a family and have children. Yeah. And I think the dark forces really want to just attack family. Yes. Uh, yeah. They just want to tear families apart mm -hmm. in every which way. That is what Marxism wants. One of the goals of Marxism is to destroy the family unit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that is why we as Christians, where the Lord said in the beginning, here's the man, here's the woman, go and multiply. You are the family. This is the family unit. That is what God says. And Marxism, which is anti-Christian, anti-God, wants to destroy the family unit. We need to be very clear about that. That's why socialism and Marxism is anti-God and anti-Christ. And we as Christians need to stand against that. I mean, you were from Austria. You, you were from Austria. Was Austria a, a, a socialist country back then? Uh, now, I don't know. Well, we have two parties. We have a socialist party and we do have a conservative party. Oh, okay. And over the many years, this has sometimes changed. But more recently, it has, I mean, there has been a, a larger socialist influence on the country. Yes. Why, why do you think uh, Marxism is so powerful? How the dark forces using the Marxism to influence people? Well, they have a a plan that uh, lasts for decades. Like Chinese have a plan for, uh, they are thinking in a hundred years, how can we change a culture in a hundred years, you know? And those long-term plans, if you look at the Marxist manifesto and all the different points that they said, this is what we need to accomplish, you know? And to destroy the family is just one of their points. Yeah. You know, but they have 40 points of what they want to accomplish. Society, as we know it, is going to be destroyed through Marxism. There is a scripture, and I want to read one scripture to you. It is James 5.16, which is like an antidote if we have been caught in something that we are not supposed to be in, and we know that we are not supposed to be in it. Mm -hmm. So it says in James 5.16, Therefore... Confess your sins to one another. What is that? Your false steps, your offenses, and pray for one another 
that you may be healed and restored. Mm -hmm. And there is the possibility of healing and restoration for each and every one of you. The heartfelt and persistent prayer, mm -hmm. heartfelt and persistent prayer of a righteous man, a believer, can accomplish much. When put into action and made effective by God, it is dynamic and can have tremendous power. Yeah. So that is what we believe in. I was recently uh, with a friend of mine who was invited to preach via Zoom in Kenya mm. to a Kenyan congregation. Mm -hmm. And I was there. It was late at night, between midnight and 2.15 in the morning. We were, we were there because of the time difference, because yeah. it was Sunday morning there. So anyway, the pastor in Kenya was asking, uh, who would like to have a prayer? And then six people came, for, uh, came forward. And then we prayed for five minutes really intensively with the Holy Spirit for these six people. And just two days ago, the pastor called me back and said, guess what? All six people that came forward reported that they have been healed. Everybody who came forward was healed. And he says, praise the Lord. So there is power in prayer. Yeah. So there's tremendous power in prayer. So anything, any situation, any circumstance can be healed in Jesus' name. Uh-huh. So anybody who is hopeless, anybody who knows I am sitting in a situation where I want out of it, but I don't know how to get out of it, just ask for help. There is help in prayer. Jesus wants to save you and rescue you, transform you, change you from the inside out, and give you a future and a hope, according to Jeremiah 29, 11. We have a lot of people from Taiwan. They're actually like... Oh, look at Marxism is in the Bible, in the book of Acts. Deception is very, very powerful. Yeah. And just labeling something with a certain name, saying Marxism is in the book of Acts, yes. I would say this is wrong. This is deception. Charity is in the book of Acts. Yes. Loving, giving is in the book of Acts, not Marxism. Marxism is not in the book of Acts. That's deception. That's a lie. And so we really need to discern between what is right, what is wrong, what is evil, what is good. But in the last days, the labels are being switched. And then the people that are not questioning things, mm -hmm. you know, they believe that what they are being fed, and they're being fed lies and lies and lies and lies, and then they... Also, one of the things that is being said, if you repeat a lie over and over and over again, there comes a point where the lie is being believed as truth. Yeah. And that is where so many people are today. But we, as a Christian, we know what the truth is, which is Jesus Christ. So we can go back to the Word. So my advice for anybody that is listening to this right now is, no matter in which, under which government you are living, and it might be an oppressive government or it might be a free government. Lies are everywhere. Mm -hmm. The most important thing is that you have a relationship with God. Yeah. You know, have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. That needs to be your number one priority to establish that relationship. Because if you have that, you can sustain everything and anything. Practice your prayer life. And Joy life. comes in the morning. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and I think if you want to have a good life, you you want to have a you want to have a faithful life in the, in your Christian life. Just just be a Christian, read the Bible, and do the thing. Like uh, Greek philosopher Aristotle said, if you want to be a good person, you must practice to be a good person. If you want to be rich, you must practice making money. If you want to be a charitable person, you must give and give out charity until. It becomes a hobby for you. It becomes a, a lifestyle for you. And being a Christian is the same thing. You need to pray. You need to pray every day. You need to read the Bible in order to be a good Christian and to be a hopeful Christian. One thing that I love about God is that uh, 
the Word says, and again, we always need to go back to the Word of God. The Word of God says, He, God, knit us together in our mother's womb, and He knew us before He knit us together in our mother's womb. Mm -hmm. So God made us, and He makes each and every one of us uniquely. Mm -hmm. We are all different, and each one of us has been given unique talents. We, we don't need to hide them, you know. We need to use them and they are to be used for the benefit of the body of Christ. So a talent, a gift has been given to you in order to share it and to give to others so that others are enriched. Yeah. Well, you are a great uh, TV host, you know, <laughs> that's your talent. And you're using it in order to let other people, to, to lead other people to the truth. You know, you're interviewing people that you want to interview so that other people can find the truth. That's a gift. Yeah, that's a gift. That's my gift. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone has a, a calling by God to do yes. what... Uh, we supposed to do and then uh, what we can we have to do is to find it and we talk to god like you said relationship is the most important thing uh, with god in order to have a fa uh, fulfilled life we need to have the relationship with god so thank you again for teaching us all these and confirming uh basically our ministry because we love what we're doing right yes. now yeah you're in the right spot you're doing the right thing uh, i want to encourage you to continue because your audience uh loves that what you're doing and i believe that your ministry will grow i want to pray actually for you do i have a minute to yes, pray for please, you please please father in the name of jesus i pray that you bless this ministry and these two here and that the message that they want to bring to the world will be successful, will be picked up, will be supported. Father, I pray for finances and for resources to come to them to support that so that they can even go to higher levels. Let Lord take them from glory to glory and let them be joyful in that what they are doing, rejoicing in you, Lord, and bringing the truth forth, educating the people, and letting people come to the Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Yeah. amen. amen. Do you have any last words for our audience? Love the Lord with all your strengths, with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you very much. And thanks for everyone looking for this episode. I think this is a great one. Yeah. 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 Oh, thank Amen. you again for coming. And then... Uh, can we invite you more times? <laughs> <laughs> we'll make it happen, yes. All right. All right. Well, uh, please go on to uh, Pray California website. Dot org. Yeah, and, uh, dot org. Pray California dot org. And then uh, go on it and just pray together. Unite. And then this is our chance. It, even if you don't live in California, pray with us. We need to save California. Yes. Think about it. Hollywood is spreading all the message out. Oh and my then, God. <laughs> and then our, our government is like the war. Everything came from California. Yes. If we can change California, we can change the world. So it's okay. time to change California. And then we, we, as Christian, we have a lot to do. All right. Thank you. Uh, Minister Wolfgang. Minister. Okay. <laughs> Wolfgang. Thank you. <laughs> Minister Wolfgang for coming. And uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye-bye. God bless. Bye-bye.